Are you looking for a no-code solution to define business rules? Let's discover Go Rules, a free open source business rules engine. It comes with a visual editor to define the decision process based on different inputs to output a response your development team can then integrate in their different apps. The main goal is to give the control to non-technical team members the power to define and validate the business logic rules while avoiding communication and code issues. GoRules is license-based and comes with a free tier up to two users, one project and one environment. You can deploy it yourself by following the detailed installation guides in the documentation or for a simpler process, you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it on your server or the cloud provider of your choice while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To start using GoRules on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. From there, deploy my first service and search for GoRules. Select, choose between the different cloud providers. The last option is if you already have an existing server, you can deploy it into and we'll take care of all the rest. I will stick to Hetzner for this video choose between the different regions, service plan, and then next. You can adjust more advanced settings, choose between different level of support. I will keep the level one, which is included by default. And once you are ready, hit the create service button. Once your instance is ready, you will receive this email from our platform explaining you the different setup you have to do because GoRules is a bit special and you will need a license key. First, you need to follow this link, portal.gorules.io. You will need either to sign up or to connect to your existing account, then continue. You don't have to define a password. They will send you a code to copy paste. Here it is. I copy it and paste it to connect to it. And here you are on GoRules, but not on your instance yet. You are on the portal to manage licenses. So what you will need to do is to create an environment for free, you will have one. So let's name it development and create. Now you have made it. It will generate a license key. By default, it will be hidden. But for this video, I will reveal it. No worries, I will kill the instance later. Copy it into your clipboard. And let's follow the instructions that were in the mail. So what we need to do is to go into the environment settings and to replace your Go Rules license key with what we have currently in our clipboard. So let's go to the dashboard, click here to get the password link. We arrive on LSTO administration UI for your instance. Click on update config, then switch to env for the environment variables. And let's replace your Go Rules license key with your Go Rules license key. Then update and restart. You will have the different comments that are executed while your server is restarting. It will just take a few seconds before being ready. All right, so now it's done. We can follow the URL for our GoRules instance. Click here. Then you will need to enter your email address. Continue. Then copy what you receive. Paste it into your instance. And we arrive on our fresh GoRules instance. Let's start by creating a project. So create project. I will name it lsto demo you can create it from scratch from template they provide two different ones or from an existing project so for now we will create it from a template and we'll keep both of them then create let's open our project and inside the project you have the list of the different decisions that are created so one template is one decision before creating one from scratch together, let's open one of the different examples. The visual interface is very nice. You have this node-based system with a request, which is the input that you will send to your decision. Then you will have different trees based on what you do. Here it's a simple table. And then this table, the result will be sent to the response and your developer can work with it. So let's try to run it. You have either the open simulator on the top right or this button on the bottom left, which are exactly the same. So to be able to run it, we need to create a test event. So let's name it tests and we need to fill some data. 
but currently we have no idea what to send as data. What they can do is in the request to write the schema. So it will do some validation. If you highlight here, you can see that it will verify that the data you pass as input is correct before doing even anything. But it's not done on the example, but we can check on fees. What are the data they are using? So let's put it below. And from here, you can understand what is this table of decision doing. On the left half, you have the inputs. So what it's expecting, cart.total, the customer country, and the tier. Based on that, it's going from top to bottom. So if it matches the condition from here, then it will output the right columns. So the fees flat there won't be, it will be a percent of two and so on. But instead of just doing it by head, we can just fill the correct data. So it's expecting a cart, which seems to be an object because it contains a total and they expect values above 1000. So let's put 2000. Then it requires a customer with a country. So let's say we want to use mm, this one here. Country will be CA. I guess it's for Canada and the tier it's not required for the other ones. So we stick to it and let's try to run it. We can see we have a result on the right with the output and the fields. So this is this line. It's nice. It's highlighting it in green, which seems correct. So we have a cart above 1000. Our country is CA. So it matches this condition. And then the percent applied is five. Here, if we go back to the graph, you can see that the graph is the first request, the time it takes, then the fees, which is the conditions, the time it takes, and then the response to output it. It's very quick because it's very simple, but this feature to know the time can be very useful if you start to use custom functions. Okay, let's get back to our table and try different values. So let's say we are a gold customer. So tier is gold in lowercase. If we run it, it doesn't change anything because only the US customer that are gold has a different percent of fees. So let's say US. And now the first line is selected and we got the 2%. If we are not gold, if we are silver, then the second line is applied. Perfect. So just by this simple example, you can grasp the potential of it. You have your developer team. You don't want to communicate with them the rules because it will be back and forth with the sales team, the manager team, the product team. So what you have is this no code interface where you can visually see what is happening. And then your developer will just have to fill the input and will get the correct output. All right, so we can have more different type of components, but instead of starting from there, we will create our own decision. So new decision, and let's say we are creating a decision if we send discount to user based on different criteria. Okay, it's created, let's open it. Now it's empty, so we need a request and a response. And in between, we will write whatever we want take our decision. As they did, we will skip the configuration of the schema and we will see the different components available. So let's say we want to use expression. Here it is. If you have no idea what it is, you can jump directly into it and try to use it, but I don't recommend you to do it. You can click on the three dots and open the documentation. And Gover's documentation is very well done. So you have here for all the different type of decisions, we are in expression and it's explaining us how it works and different example. So you can combine different values to create new values or just based on conditions to remap it into a more simple format. Okay, so now we connect our request to our first expression and this one we name it user status. And based on the data, we define a status to our user. 
So edit the expression, add row, and let's name it status. And the expression here will be if on our user dot servers, for example, we will have an array of servers. So if the length, so you can see the functions available. So if the length of the number of servers of our users is above two, for example, then our user status will be very active. If not, if the length of user servers is above zero, then our user is active because it has at least one server. If not, the user is inactive. And this is as simple as that, a double ternary. So we can try it. We create a test event. We don't need to, to rename it, but let's do it. We'll have a user. It will contain servers. We said, oh, it needs to be in JSON. So it's an array of server. We could add object with some data, but let's keep it simple and name it server A, server B, and server C. If we run it, then you can see that the output will be the status is very active. If our user has only one server, it will be considered active. And it, if it's empty or not defined, it will be inactive. So this is the first information we have. Another thing we can do is to check if our user has a registered card. We'll pass it as data later. So let's use it now. Card registered. And also the number of days the user has been subscribed. So we wait a bit before sending some discount code to them. So let's say five days, we can try to send it. It will just be extra data we have in the output. Okay, so now at this step, we have all those data. So we not only have the servers list, but now we have the status and we can make a switch. So based on the status, we will do something. So we link it to the switch. Again, if you want details on how it works, the documentation, but here it's pretty straightforward. We have a if. So based on the condition, so if status is equal to inactive, then we do something. And we can add another condition, either else if or else, and we do something else. We can connect the dot to another thing. But we want only to do something if the user is inactive. We will need some more space. So let's move the response. We'll have a decision table, as we saw in our example. So it would enter only if the user is inactive. Then our decision table, we need to add the different inputs that will change our decision. So let's add one and it will be card registered. The field will be user dot card register. And you can see we have the auto completion because it detected it from our data. Okay, we can add it. And the second one we will need. So by default, there is one, so we can use this one. Select all will be user dot number days subscribed. We name it NB days subscribed. Okay. And based on those two criteria, we will output something. So edit the output column. We name it discount. And we will send it as an object discount dot percent. We can do more, but let's keep it simple. And now we add the different rows to take our decision. So if the user already have its card, it's more likely that it will convert. So let's say, oh, it's here, card register. So it's true. And we wait for five days. So we can write expression here, like we did for the remap. So if it's above five days, and it's true, the discount will be 10. And if it's been five days, but it's false, so it didn't connect its card, then we will offer 30% discount. We can add some more detail, less likely to convert. So our team can understand why we choose those different values options. 
Okay, let's try to run it. So we have true and it's not above. So I think it will not enter anywhere. So we have nothing. But if we enter six days and we run it, oh, I think I have an issue here because it's not going from this one to the decision table. So maybe it's not three, but only two equal. It's not JavaScript. So let's try to run it again. And yes, perfect. Now it's going to decision table here and we get our 10% discount. So yeah, first line, something happened. If we enter a bad value, nothing happened. And if it's a uh, six and false, we should have our 30% discount. Perfect. All right. So once you are happy with your decision graph, don't forget to output it to the response. So the whole thing is triggered going from request to response. Everything is green. Your team will more likely have an output. Then you either save it to draft or if you are happy with it, you can publish it. OK, let's publish it. But once you have published it, go back to the menu and you need to create all your decisions first and then create releases, which will contain different version. So you can create a release. It will take all your current decision at their current state. You create the release and you will be able to download it. And here is the file you will have. It's a JSON containing all the different rules. You won't have to do anything with it uh, by reading yourself. There is an SDK to use it. So then when you have created all your rules, you have downloaded your file, you pass it to your team and there are different SDK for Rust, Node.js, Python and Go to be able to load the file that you provide to them and to execute the different rules. It's very easy and very straightforward. You call it with the SDK and you get the result and then you code whatever you want based on that. But one downside is that you can't just pass the URL of your server and it will automatically update your project. You have to every time download a new JSON file, which is maybe more secure for updates, but the process is not the most straightforward. Maybe it will come in the later versions or maybe it exists and I missed it somewhere. Of course, the best part of it is that you can make it with your team. So don't forget to go to the different settings, add and invite the team members and start creating rules together. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Go rules with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.